When I was deep into my four years at college, I decided uh, that I wanted to be a professional actor when I grew up, which was, you know, right about then. Um, and I decided the best way to become a professional actor was to start my own company, which was, you know, okay for a little while, for a couple weeks, it went okay. Um, and the very first show we did, one of the only shows we uh, ever did, uh, was called Animal Tales. It's this beautiful play where everyone acts like animals but without being furries. If that, you know, <laughs> if that makes sense. If you gave, if you put, uh, you know, like a mouse's thoughts inside of a human voice box for five minutes, what would it talk about? What would it say? What sort of challenges would it have? It was beautiful. And I thought for this beautiful play that I wanted to take on the road to Philadelphia and I was going to go to Harrisburg and then we were going to premiere it as this beautiful, you know, first show in the beautiful new theater over at York College that I wanted a painting to go along with this play. And I commissioned my first ever painting, first and only painting I've ever commissioned, um, and I wanted it to be called Animal Tales. And I said to the artist, I said, take this blank canvas, um, and I want you to create, I want you to put animals in cages, but I want the animals to be people. And I want it to be like a PETA protest, P-E-T-A. Now, I'm not protesting falafels, okay? I'm gonna, a PETA protest, but with your beautiful, amazing style that only I can see. No, I, you know, I can see this beauty. I know you're going to be big someday, so I'm going to take this thing on the road with me. Um, and what I got from the artist was strippers in cages. <laughs> Which was hot, but not maybe the PETA protest I was looking for. I didn't care, I didn't care. I was charging ahead with this production and I brought it with me and it hung above the stage for all the productions that we did. Um, a couple years later, or th the next year, I moved to New York City and I was thinking, oh, I'm gonna have a piece of original art on my wall. And I brought the strippers in cages to my first apartment in Brooklyn and moving in with these couple of people who were also all artists, looked at it and they went, that's an interesting choice. Okay, um, and in the hub of, I, I moved out of that place just four months into living in New York um, to go to somewhere that was real New York and not Williamsburg. Um, and so, those who know, know. Um, so I move out, and in the hubbub of moving out, I lose track of this painting. I don't bring it with me when I move, but my roommate assures me that it is safe and that it was on her wall. Now, then eventually she got out of that relationship um, and it followed her to her next place. And then she got out of that relationship and it followed her to her next place. And then she became a personal assistant um, for a dentist in New Jersey. And so it hung in the children's bedroom in the dentist's office in New Jersey for a couple years. And then Nicole moved out of there and so it followed her. And I've lost track of Nicole. And I don't know where this painting is. And that makes me really sad, but I'm hoping, I'm really hoping that one day someone finds this painting and they look on them and then they look at it and they're so inspired by this painting that they just have to find the artist that took this blank canvas and turned it into strippers in cages. And they will see written on the back of that painting the signature of the painter, Rita Whitney, and... <laughs> They, they will find her somehow through the internet. Well, I guess it says Rita King. So they will find Rita King, realize that she's now Rita Whitney, find her here in York, and suddenly commissions for strippers in cages will be coming from all over the country, and all of our lives will be enriched. Thank you.